Watch you guys got another video. If you're looking to install any operating system over the network with iVentoy, I'll show you how to do it in this video. I'm going to be using this little mini PC as my little home server. I'll be running Ubuntu server on this mini PC. If you want to see a separate video on how to set up Ubuntu server on a mini PC, let me know in the comments section down below. But I'll show you all the steps that you'll need to set up iVentoy on Ubuntu server. First, a quick word from today's video sponsor, VIP SED Key. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM key or cheap Windows 10 Pro OEM key, check out the links in the video description and use my promo code capital B capital R 09. Apply this to your order and get a 25% discount on all your purchases on VIP SED Key. You can even get Microsoft Office keys on here as well. Once you've chosen your product, submit your order. And once you've submitted your order, you can use PayPal to pay for your purchases. Click pay now and sign into your PayPal account. They will then send you your key to your account inside a VIP SED key, just like you see right here. Check all the links in the video description. Once you've got your key, you'll be able to activate your version of Windows, just like you see right here on the screen. Very simple and easy to do. OK, so let's go ahead and get this set up. I'm going to go ahead and download Ubuntu server and I'm going to go ahead and make my bootable USB flash drive. I'll show you how to do this part, but the installation part is pretty straightforward. So I've made a video on this doing Ubuntu server before, but if you want to see a separate video just for that, then let me know and I'll be happy to make that video for you. You can also need Belina Etcher to download to create your bootable USB media. So I'm going to go ahead and download this, choose the file that I want to use, in this case, Ubuntu server. Choose the actual flash drive. It's already selected it for me. That's it right there. And all I need to do now is click select and then click flash. And it's going to flash that USB flash drive with our Ubuntu server. And I can then boot to that and basically install Ubuntu onto this system. Now, there is an actual tutorial on Ubuntu's website, which you can follow through. I'll leave a link for that in the video description on how to install Ubuntu server. Very simple and easy to do. You can see here, boot from install media, and you can choose your language, choose the correct keyboard layout, uh, choose your install, and so on. It's very easy to do. You could follow that. I'll leave a link for that in the video description as well. But if you want to see a more detailed video, let me know, and I'll do my best to make that video for you. Anyway, let's move on to the next step. So I'm on my computer now. Ubuntu server is already installed. I'm opening up a terminal window here and I'm going to SSH into our server. So I'm going to go SSH space my username at and the IP address that we set our server up with. So it will tell you that on the server once you've finished installing Ubuntu server. It's going to ask us for our password so we can log into our server. So I'm going to go ahead and give it that. Now we're logged in and now we can see our server and I called it home lab. So I'm going to go ahead and put sudo space at space update, and it's going to ask us for our password one more time. So go ahead and put that in, push enter, and it will update the server. Now we're going to do upgrade after this. So let's go ahead and do that one, which is sudo space at space upgrade. And this will then upgrade all of that for us as well. There's probably going to be a few upgrades that we need to do. So I'm going to say yes here and it'll go off and download and uh, upgrade our server for us. Okay, so that's now done. Let's go ahead and install some stuff here that we're gonna be using on our server. So first off, let's go sudo space apt space install, and we're gonna install NeoFetch and also HTOP uh, on here. So let's go ahead and type NeoFetch and then space HTOP as well. So it's gonna install both of those on the system. Say Y for yes to install those and it'll go off and get those done for us. Now, if we type NeoFetch in here, you will see some stats will come up and it will tell us exactly what we've got running here. And you can read through here and it will tell you the uptime, the kernel and the other stuff on there, Ubuntu server, as you can see here, the CPU that we're running, the GPU and the memory on that system. We can also do HTOP as well because we installed HTOP. So if you type HTOP, it's going to give you some information about your system as well and you can see it all running there to quit out you would just push f10 and this will quit out of htop so that's now done so we've now got uh neofetch and htop installed and running on the system it's not that important but it's nice now we're going to go ahead and get our iventoy installed here now iventoy is going to allow us to install 
any operating system across the network to virtual machines, to computers, to laptops on the network, and we'll be able to do that using the free version because there is a, a free version and a paid version. You can install up to 20 uh, clients on the free version, which is really good. So we're going to go ahead and download this. I'll give you the link also in the video description what you're going to have to type in and it's this link right here and you need to change the version here to whatever version is the latest version on their website. So you can see here I'm going to change this to 20 and this will be the link that I'm going to type into my terminal window to download and install it onto our server. Once we get this done we're pretty much uh, good to go so I'm going to go ahead and paste that in right here in my terminal window and we can now see that's now done. Once we've got that done, we're gonna to need to unpack it. So let's go ahead and quickly use this command right here and push enter, and this will unpack it. So what we need to do now is change directory to our iVentoy folder. So we can go to iVentoy-1.0.20. That is what we've just unpacked. So let's go ahead and change our directory to that right here and you can see it listed there in blue and what we'll do is push enter now we're in actually that directory right there so once we're inside there you can uh, type dir and you'll be able to see all the information in there if you wanted to you can also start the service by typing in this command here it says please use this uh the sudo command so i had to put sudo in front of it and then that same command again and it started it and now we've got it started so now we need to go to this location right here now we've started it. So this is the IP address uh, right here. It's telling us to go here. Or you can try your own IP with the colon uh, 26,000 uh, port there. So we can go ahead and do that. So that is the command there. You have to put sudo in front of it and it will then start that service. And you'll be able to then go to the browser and you should see something looking like this. I just put my uh, IP address for my survey here with colon 26,000 and it give me this page right here. You can see we don't have any ISOs or images on our server at the moment to install from. So you've got all your host information here, boot information, configuration, Mac filtering and image management and registration information on here as well. So this is all ready to go. That's our GUI interface. Now to log into our server via uh, this little program here. We're going to be using WinSCP and we can now upload our ISOs. Now you can actually upload them via the command prompt if you want to via doing commands, but this is a lot easier, believe you me. And uh, what we're going to do is select on the right hand side is my server. On the left is my PC. I'm just going to quickly upload this ISO file here to my server into the ISOs uh, directory. <laughs> And they will all live in that ISO directory on our iVentoy server. And all I need to do here is upload as many ISOs to that directory and I can install any operating system uh, on there. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. But this is probably going to be the easiest way to get your ISOs onto uh, your server rather than doing loads of commands. It's going to be a lot more easier for you. Now, once we've got this set up, we can log into uh, the WinSCP here and we can navigate through our server through here if we wanted to, or we can use the terminal. It's entirely up to you. So let that just uh, go ahead and upload that ISO. So why would you need to do this? Well, the reason why you'd want to do this is if you're installing Windows or Linux or any other type of uh, operating system or even WinPEs and stuff like that, you can boot to them and things like that across the network. You don't need to use USB flash drives. You don't need to do anything like that. You can use this method to go ahead and install any of these uh, from your iVentoy. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you how this works. So I've got those now. So let's go down where we can see image uh, management here. And you can see it's not listed here. So let's hit refresh. And now you can see it's there sitting on our server in the right directory. So now we can use this to install uh, uh, computers or uh, laptops or even virtual machines on our local network it's that simple so depending on how many you got if you're using the free version i can install this across the network on up to 20 pcs if i wanted to so it's very very useful and uh, let's go ahead and get this set up so i'll show you how it works so i'm going to start the service right here you can stop and start it from the uh, web page here if you wanted to which is very useful now you don't see any information there at the moment, but let's open up a virtual machine here. 
And you can see on this virtual machine, I don't have any ISO uh, for, to boot to. I'm just going to use Ventoy uh, or iVentoy. So I'm going to start it up and you should then see it's using the Pixie Boot uh, scenario here to basically find my iVentoy directory. It's found the server and there we go. It's right there. And you can see my ISO file is right here. If I click on this right now, it's going to go ahead and start to install that version of uh, Windows onto this system. It's that quick and easy to do. Now, if this was a computer, you would do the same thing. Uh, you would boot the PC into a Pixie boot and it would then find it automatically on the network and go ahead and allow you to install whatever ISO you have in your Eventoid directory. It's that simple. So there we go. We can now go ahead and install Windows like this. So let me go ahead and shut this down. I quickly show you again on how to say maybe do uh, say Mint or WinPE. We'll try one of those. So I'm going to go ahead and I've got these ready to go. So I'm going to upload these to my server. And again, you can upload as many as you like or whatever you like to install on a regular basis. So I'm just going to quickly drag Mint over and I'll also drag over the WinPE as well. So to show you how this works as well. Now remember, any computer that is on your local network, uh, once you go into Pixie Boot, and you can get into Pixie Boot from the BIOS or UEFI. And once you turn that on, it's going to basically find your iVentoy on the local network and allow you to install any operating system. No more USB flash drives, no more creating bootable USB flash drives. That is a uh, old hat. You can do it this way. It's very simple. Now, I've been installing Windows across the local network for many, many years in businesses and stuff like that. So this is nothing new to me, but this is a really useful way of getting this set up for any operating system. So let's go ahead and let that upload it to our server. Now, of course, because this is a server, we can use this for other things as well. We don't just have to use it for iVentor. You can use it for many other things like Plex and things like that if you wanted to. But we're just setting up iVentoy for this video. So now I've uploaded a WinPE and also I've uploaded a Linux version. So let me show you what I'm going to do here. So if this was a PC or a laptop, you'd be going into the BIOS and boot into a Pixie boot and it will then automatically find it and you can then install it. But I'm doing this from a virtual machine just to show you. So I'm going to quickly select, say, Ubuntu here. And once we select this, I'll go ahead and set this up. So let me go ahead and click next. We can leave that as is. We're not going to put in that directory there. I'm going to go into another drive here. Select this one right here. Make a folder. Call it test two or something like that. And let's go ahead and select that. Click OK. And click next. And we don't need to give it too much space. I can store this on a single disk. Go into uh, custom hardware. Give it a bit of memory so it's only got four gigs so let's give it 16 gigs we're not going to be using the cd dvd here we're going to be using the bridged connection here now all i need to do is click finished click power on and it will say yes and it will see here it's doing a search and straight away it's found that system and all i need to do now you can see it's found iventoy and we've got the isos listed right here so let's go ahead and choose linux here and there we go. Start Linux Mint, push enter, and this will then go ahead and start to install Linux Mint onto this virtual machine. That simple. Now, this could be a computer or a laptop or any other device that you're trying to install an operating system onto. It will automatically be detected uh, as soon as you boot into that Pixie boot in the uh, BIOS here or UEFI. So let's go ahead and uh, try one more. I'll quickly boot to our WinPE here. I'm just going to let this uh, load up the Linux so you can see it does actually work. And again, we haven't got any sort of ISO boot into an ISO from the virtual machine itself. Now, if you're using a lot of uh, virtual machines and you're doing this on a regular basis uh, where you're installing stuff, you don't need to keep uh, downloading stuff. You can have them stored on your server and quickly boot to them, just like you see right here. And there is Linux Mint right there nicely ready to go and ready to install so let's go ahead and create another new one i'm going to call this uh pe and we'll call this a, a win pe version and i'll quickly boot to that as well so you can see you can do this as well i've already got it set up i'm going to say yes here and boot to it 
it should go off onto the network and find uh, our iEventoy. And there it is, it's found it. And that's because the server is running. I can now use my WinPE and boot straight to my WinPE. There you go. How easy is that? It's much easier than uh, basically uh, booting to a USB flash drive or downloading stuff. It's a lot easier. So I'll just let that load in and we are done. Now, once you're finished here, you can stop the service running. So you don't have to have iVentoy running all the time. If you're only using it at certain times, you can go to your web browser, type in your IP address for that actual uh, page, and you can then start the service when you want to. So it's not always running if you don't want it. And there we are. So let's go ahead and I've stopped that service, and that is now complete. So that's how you can install any operating system or boot to any WinPE uh, using iVentoy on an Ubuntu server with a mini PC. So we're just running that on a mini PC. Very simple and easy to do. You don't need a, a monitor or keyboard or anything like that with the server version. You can just log on to it on any sort of PC. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Let me know in the comment section if you want to see more like this, and I'll do my best to make those videos for you. Bye for now. Thank you.